In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a functional drop down menu in Figma. So, this is an interactive component that you can place onto your forms, onto your form prototypes, and you'll be able to select from a multitude of options and each state is going to reflect the specific option that you have selected in this drop down menu. If you'd like to save time and use this in your own project, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can download the source file for this component. And now let's get started with creating this interactive component. The first thing we need to do is create one singular option. So I'm going to choose the text tool to type in option number one. I'm going to zoom in a little and then just press command zero to view this at 100% size. Uh, I'm going to select the text object and press shift A to create an auto layout. I'm going to rename this option and I'm going to adjust paddings as well as the fill. That's probably going to be white and these horizontal paddings are going to be 20 with vertical ones being 14. At this point, uh, we are ready to turn this into a component. I'm going to go over here and click this icon to create a component. We got an option component and we're going to add another state. This state is going to be called hover and then we are going to create another state and this state is going to be called selected, right? So we have an option component with three states, default, hover and selected. I'm going to rename this property to state and I'm going to actually go to prototype and start prototyping this, this function, right? So I'm going to use this little circle, connect that over here and say while hovering, change to state hover, right? That makes sense. I'm going to go for 150 milliseconds, uh, smart animate and then something similar right here. So from the hover state, it's going to go to the, or actually never mind. This is the only interaction we're going to set up within the option component. And we're just, we just need to somehow differentiate visually that this is a hover state and this is a selected state. So what do I think we can do here? We can change this anytime later, but I think with the selected one, we could do like a stroke, however, only on the left side. Right, so this is what I have in mind. Uh, so this would sh show that we have, that this option is so selected. This hover state I think could have like another fill, um, a black one with the opacity of 10%. So when you hover over this option, you get, you know, it gets a little bit darker. And right now we are ready to actually use an instance of this component, of this option component and create an option menu. So I'm going to duplicate this two times, or actually let's create five options, right? So that's five in total. I'm going to select all of these and then press shift A to create again an auto layout. I'm going to name this auto layout list of options and then turn that into a component itself. I'm going to change the size like this, press enter. And with all of these, I'm going to go to horizontal resizing over here and set that to fill container. That way, when you change the dimensions of this, you, you get this kind of behavior, right? Addi additionally, we could do go over here, select all of these te text objects and go for fill container as well. This means that this will now happen, right? It's not necessary because we won't be getting an, a list of options that is this small, but just to make it really um, working properly. I'm gonna go over here to create a test frame, test frame, right? And then I'm going to use an instance of this list of options to test if our behavior of the menu is as intended. Make it a little bit bigger and center that. Select the frame and launch the prototype, right? So you can see that we are getting this behavior that is desirable. Um, we might want to reduce the amount of darkening we get to like seven. And let's just make uh, one of these selected, right? So um, I'm gonna reset the prototype. So this is, this is the behavior you get right now. Um, this option looks selected and these, all of these, you can hover over these and you get this change. What I'm thinking right here is if you hover over the option that you have selected, this should change to this hover state as well. So let's just go over to the option component. While hovering, change to state hover, right? So it goes both from this state and this state. Let's test this out, right? You can see we get, we get this behavior, but since the line disappears, we could do actually, let's do this a little bit more interactive. I'm gonna create another state. This one's gonna be called selected hover, hover, right? And this would mean that 
we will get the same darkening, but with the change that now actually when we hover over the selected option, we get this, right? I think that's better. So this behaves accordingly. Perfect. I'm going to speed up these interactions. I'm going to go for 100 milliseconds. Um, the preview is a little bit slower because I'm recording a video, so that probably hurts the performance of the rendering in Figma, but um, yeah, I would just like to see something a little bit quicker, right? Yeah, this, this is better. Um, perfect. I'm going to revert this back to default and I'm going to use this one of these instances of the option component and then detach that by pressing command option B uh, to create our drop down the actual drop down menu. So this is going to say select option, it's going to be this big, it's not going to have a fill, it's going to have a stroke though, it's going to be rounded like this, 10 probably. I think we could do a bigger padding and then I'm going to use the pen tool to create an arrow like this. Copy that and paste that inside this auto layout. This one is going to have probably two pixels, so it's going to be a bit stronger. I'm going to change the alignment of the auto layout and I'm going to go here to go for space between spacing mode. If you'd like to learn more about uh, auto layout, go and check out my channel. I have done some tutorials on auto layout, so definitely if you need to be updated in that area, go ahead and watch those videos. Right, so we have our drop down menu. I'm gonna reduce the, the amount of stroke right here. And now that I th think about it, you probably should reduce, oops, you probably should reduce the vertical padding of these to like 12. You can see that it immediately updates all of these instances and that's why you want to work with components as much as possible when creating components like this or uh, even design systems, especially when you're creating design systems. And the next step we're going to do now is taking this drop down menu and turning that into a component like this. So we get drop down menu component that behaves like this. I'm going to create a new variant. This variant is going to be called default default basically. And this one is going to be called default as well. There's going to be a conflict, but we're going to, we're going to change the property name to option. So there is no option in this, um, in this state. And then we're going to create another property and this one is going to be called uh, visible visible options, right? And in this one, visible options gonna be yes, and in this one's gonna be no. So there is no conflict anymore. But we actually have to include these options in this variant, which means using this list of options, dropping it over here, uh, really quickly just changing the option numbers to reflect final result. So three, option four, option five. And taking this, pressing command X, selecting this variant and pressing command V. This happened. We don't want that, but we're going to fix that by going over here and selecting absolute position. And we're going to make sure that it's positioned precisely below the bottom line like this, right? We're going to probably change this position to 57, not 57.5 and align that to the left and then just do this. Make it the same width as the drop down menu, right? So we get these two variants where you have select an option visible and then you have all of these options visible, right? We're gonna also rotate this arrow and then take this initial default variant and click plus. It moved all the way over here, but we're gonna just fix that by using the X coordinates positioning right here. Um, this one's gonna say option one. So this is option default, this is option one, and this is also gonna say option one. Right. Then I'm going to create another variant. This one's going to say option two. And I'm going to repeat the process for all five options. So I have option one with option one, two, three, four. You get the point, right? I'm going to select all of these and then just go to visible options and set that to no, right? None of these have this thing going on, right? Now, what I'm gonna do now is select option one in this drop down menu, select this circle over here, and then click and drag to connect that to option one. Same with option two, option three, option four, and option five. All these are gonna be on click. And then what I'm gonna do is duplicate option one and set visible options to yes. Right, so we have for each option, there are going to be two variants. Select all of these and Alt 
click and drag or option click and drag to create alternatives like this. Then I'm gonna select all of these arrows and set the rotation to 180. And when that happens, you can see that we have all of these are rotated to show that the menu can be collapsed. And finally, I'm gonna copy this list of options, select all of these variants right here, and then press Command V, right? So we can see that this thing happened. We, we basically created a variant like this, but for all the options. Now, if you actually open the drop down menu from option one, you want to see the state of one of these options, the option one, as selected right so when you click from option one to here you want to see this same with option two and option three and option four and five as well what you also want to do is being able when there is this drop down menu placed uh, in a prototype you want to be able to click on it and then have this dialog open right so i'm gonna again select this variant and this circle in prototype and click and drag like this. So on click, change to option default, but with visible options, smart animate is out. And also at the same time, when I click this area again, I want to return back. I want to close this window, right? Now let's do this for all of these remaining options. And this is what we get. Now, why don't, why don't we test the functionality of this component? I'm gonna remove this from the test frame, make the test frame a little, little bit bigger, and then go to assets and search for drop down menu, place that over here and center it. Actually, not, let, let's not center that. Let's move that to the uh, top part of this interface. And we should get a functional drop down menu let's launch the prototype and this is what we get we get the drop down menu that we can open but we can also close it again make up our mind we can select option one option two three four five you can see that this menu reflects which option we currently have selected and also um, not only you can change these options but you can also click the option three again and close the window, right? That's very important because when you're un under option three and you click option three, well, you need to go back to option three, right? So this is, that makes sense, right? So the functionality is here. This is how you set up a functional drop-down menu in Figma. Now I'm just gonna take a couple minutes to improve the visual, um, the look of this to make this look really, really good and pleasant to interact with. And this is the final result. We can select any option we want and we can switch the options and we get this nice hover interaction as well as close and open interaction. Leave a like if you learned something new in this tutorial. Check the link in the description if you'd like to download this interactive component and I will see you in the next one.